All right, we got to get into this uh, AEW and NXT report here. We've got the uh, Forbidden Door show coming up on Sunday. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that they did on this go home show here. Yeah, they did a lot. They crammed a lot of stuff in. That's for sure. Not you know, um, Okada. You know, I mean, Okada's on the show. Brian Danielson's not on the show. That's the big news. You know, Brian Danielson obviously not cleared. Okada showed up um, at the last minute uh, with a four way. Okada, Page, Jay White, and Adam Cole. Um, so Okada being on the show is a big plus. Um, the show itself, I mean, they, they built up the show. You got a lot of big, big names. Minoru Suzuki was on the show. Tanahashi wrestled in the main event. Um, you know, there was a lot of other stuff around. Um, the card looks, the card looks really, really good. I mean, there's a few things you could tweak. Naito's not on the show, but, you know, I mean, Shingo Takagi and Hiromu Takashi were not on TV, but they were added to the show. Almost in like this, it's almost, I mean, not even almost. It's like they added Shingo Takagi and Hiromu Takahashi to the show in such a nothing way. And with no footage and no nothing. It's just, it's just like Darby Allen does this promo. It's, it's like, it's going to be the Young Bucks and Phantasmo and Hikuleo. As a, as a team against Sting, Darby Allen, and two guys of their choosing. And then Darby does this promo and just goes, yeah, our guys are going to be Shingo and Hiromu. And there was kind of like a little pop in the arena from the fans who, you know, know who those two guys are. And it's like, you know, they haven't been mentioned at all in the buildup. And, wow, you know, they're, they're on the show. And, look, they're two of the best wrestlers in the world. But there was nothing like that told you that they were important or anything like that. I mean, Jim Ross was going crazy trying to get over Tanahashi and Okada. Um, and there was no time to, you know, push Shingo Takagi and Hiromu Takahashi on the show. So it's like, yeah, they're there. I don't know what it is, it's, it's going to mean to an average person. If you've been following New Japan, yeah, I mean, it's like the Young Bucks in the ring with those guys is something. I mean, I would have made it a tag title match if those guys are going to be on the show. I think Young Bucks defending against Shingo and Hiromu is um, a lot better. But obviously, you know, you want Sting and Darby on the show. And um, and that was the way they did it. Uh, but, um, you know, whatever. I mean, it's like got more quality wrestlers on the show. Um, build up. I mean, I thought it was a good go home show. I thought there's a lot of excitement. They ended with the the big ECW Mid-South wrestling brawl at the end of the show um, with just a whole bunch of brawling and everything like that. And then uh, that was pretty much it. Well, Danielson came out and he did a kind of a mix of a great and not great promo. It started out great where he just basically talked about how uh, we're going to see some great wrestling on Sunday. We're going to see bloody spectacle in a week. He said that Chris Jericho had paid Zack Sabre Jr. to challenge him and he wanted to prove he was the best technical wrestler in the world. But he had good news and bad news. And the bad news was he was not cleared. He was not going to be at Forbidden Door. He was not going to be at Blood and Guts. Couldn't wait to come back. He said the good news is I uh, I forget all the things you rattled off, but it was like I can read 400 words a minute. I can run two miles without breaking a sweat. Don't worry about my long term, he said. Yeah, and then basically. he... Uh, and then he said that uh, hey, there's one person that I trust to take my place at Forbidden Door and Blood and Guts. But he says, I'm not going to tell you who it is. And uh, he said he came out the uh, bad guy tunnel, and so he wasn't going to tell us. And at this point, the the promo kind of fell apart because now people were mad and they were booing, and he wouldn't tell him who it was. And then uh, Zack Sabre Jr. ends up coming out, and he looks at Brian Danielson and... You know, Danielson's celebrating in the corner afterwards, but he sort of had this look this look on his face like, that didn't exactly end up the way that I wanted. But anyway, it'll be uh, Zack Sabre Jr. versus a mystery opponent at Forbidden Door. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I think the betting line guy is Claudio Castanoli. Um, I would think so. Yeah, um, I don't know that as a fact. I mean, the way Brian Danielson talked sounded to me like the way he talks about Claudio. So, um, I mean, look... It'll it'll be a so, so Claudio's in AEW, I, I guess. If it is him, I mean, there's there's possibilities of somebody else, but I can't I can't think of anyone else 
that would be in that spot that's available right now where people wouldn't crap on it. And you know Tony Khan doesn't want people to crap on his mystery guys. Um, and it's just one of those unfortunate things, you know, that, that you know, he's out. Um, um, you know, I mean, the lineup, when they originally came up with the card, obviously, you know, if you put Brian Danielson and Zack Sabre Jr., you put Punk against Tanahashi, I'm not exactly sure where Moxley was going to fit in, um, but it probably would have been somewhere pretty high on the card. Um, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know. I don't know where he would, would fit in. He wasn't going to be in the in the All-Atlantic tournament. Um, but whatever, you know, whatever it was going to be, you know, obviously, you know, fate was not kind to this show and timing was not kind to this show and all that. But on paper, it is still a, a very good show. Um, how it will do on pay-per-view, you know, we'll see. Um, I mean, it's one where nobody really, there's no real, you know, whatever I would call, there's no real uh, predictor. You know, WCW did a show like this for Starcade in, I think it was 95, right? And it did not do well. But the visibility and um, knowledge of, of New Japan wrestlers in the 90s in the United States was much, much lower than the knowledge of New Japan wrestlers today because we have not just New Japan World and the fact they're on Access, even though Access doesn't get a big number, um, but the knowledge of them from a couple of years ago when New Japan was very, very hot. You know, it's not hot in the United States now at all, but it was very, very hot, and people do know Tanahashi and Okada, and they were in Ring of Honor and, and you know, Drew. You know, I mean, those those shows drew um, way over what Ring of Honor did. This show, look, this show sold out sixteen thousand tickets. Um, so, you know, it's going to be the second. It's going to end up being the second biggest crowd in the history of the company. Um, so, it's not like this stuff didn't draw as far as the live crowd goes. But as far as a pay per view, pay per view is different from a live crowd. Um, I've heard people say it's going to do terrible, and uh, you know, we'll see. Um, you know. People thought it wasn't going to sell, you know, uh, a bunch of tickets, and it did immediately. So, um, so they were wrong there, you know. As far as people point to last week's rating and whatever, you know, um, I mean, the the bad rating was Rampage, and Rampage wasn't filled with New Japan wrestlers on it. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll see about the pay per view number, and um, yeah, uh, the thing to me though, it was there, it was disappointing. Because you got Zack Sabre coming out to me, and it's like he doesn't say, you know, Zack Sabre's a great promo. Comes out, does not say a word, leaves, never on the show again. And it's kind of like, I mean, I knew Zack was going to be on the show, not 100%, but I was pretty sure Zack was going to be on the show just from things I had heard this week. And it's just like, he walks out, doesn't say a word. Like, um, I know that they had a lot to get to, but it's just like, I just kind of like walks out, you know, I just there's so much more you can I just felt I felt that he needed to grab that mic and freaking do a promo and But you know again, they want to keep the opponent a secret which is um, I Don't know. I mean, I I know why I suppose but um, It's tough right now um, To pull that off. I don't know that it's like the you know that fans right now want that, but uh, that's what they're doing. But well, they he, clearly he, didn't want it on this show because they booed when he didn't tell them. Yeah, but I mean, the guy still should have done a promo. You know, even if it's just a promo about, I'll get you someday, Brian Danielson, and where we tease it because we're going to get the match. I mean, the Brian Danielson Zack Saber match, which is like a legitimate dream match, we are going to get that match at some point, um, whether it's this year, whether it's the Tokyo Dome, whether it's at a you know, at a pay-per-view, at All Out, perhaps. So set, the, you know, start the promo for it now. I mean, uh, that's what I would have done. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, 
working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.